Well, hello and welcome back to Simple Life with Rob Pusteri. I want to um, kind of cover something this morning about um, why I've started doing this whole YouTube channel and um, what the importance of it is. We, um, I'll say it again, I say it a lot. A few months ago, back in December, well, I say a few months ago, it's now September, so. <clears throat> um, back in December, I had a heart attack. Uh, 57 years old, I had a heart attack. I had two 100% closed arteries, um, 100 blocked, 100% 100 blocked up. And um, yeah, I had a heart attack because of that. Uh, at 57 years old and I want to share a little bit about that um, and my life my my new routine for life so um, in this video we're gonna have a, you know just a couple little clips of me walking um, just to get you know to give you an idea but I um, I've changed a lot of things but I've also learned a lot and some of the things that I've learned um, it's just mind-blowing uh, the way America works, and please hear me on this, I, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor, I did not go to school for this, but I'm being schooled through it. So, um, modern day medicine, modern day um, pharmaceutical industries, all this stuff, they have a certain way of looking at things and a certain way of doing things, and, um, they help a lot of people, don't get me wrong. They helped me, I, I had a heart attack, I went in, um, they sent a catheter up through my arm and um, and put a stent in, it opened up one of my closed arteries, clogged arteries and put a stent in. The other one is completely calcified, 100% uh, calcified. And, um, and that, um, I'm going to need either a miracle, which I'm praying for, or a bypass. So, um, working on a sneeze here <laughs> with um, with all that being said I've changed my routine um, what the 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 doctors seem to want to do is put you on medication put you on blood thinners uh, cholesterol medicine just, that's just routine and they just pump that cholesterol medicine statins into you so what have I done um, what have I learned through research and and all the research that I've done, I actually listened to what different people had to say, but then I, um, I did it myself. I tried these things out. I did trial and error on my own body. Um, I found out a lot of really neat things. One of the main things I found out is that cholesterol medicine I believe, again, I'm not a doctor, so do your own research. Statins, um, I, 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 me personally, I believe they are dangerous for people, and I'll explain why. For one, when he started me on the statin, um, my blood sugar levels, my blood glucose levels raised pretty significantly, and so I started researching it and found out that the statins, they mess with your liver, uh, and I believe your pancreas, I'm not sure, but they mess with your organs, we'll put it that way. And I, I, if you research and, and look these things up, they have something that's called insulin uh, sensitivity or insulin resistance. If your body becomes insulin resistant, that means that it's it doesn't allow the insulin to do its job to control sugar spikes, um, control you know, all that blood glucose levels, all that stuff. I'm not a doctor. Um, I'm simple. So when I got on the statin, my insulin resistance number went up to a number 65. If you know anything about that, anything over a number 40 is not good. You want to keep it below a number 40. So um, along with, there was it was causing some inflammation in my back and things like that. Um, with the research that I did, I found out that I really needed to get off of 
that statin. So I went off of it. I asked the doctor if I could get off of it. And he, let, he said, it's your body, you do what you want, but I don't suggest it. So I got off of the, off of the statins um, and eventually got off of blood thinners and beta blockers and all that stuff after about seven months uh, from my heart attack and receiving a stent. So when I got my blood test done just recently, they, um, my family ped pediatrician, uh, the, the nurse working there, she said, your, um, your cholesterol level has risen from where it was when we last checked it. I said, where is it? She says, it's at like 237 points uh, total. I said, okay, where is my HDL? And um, what they call the good cholesterol. I said, where's my HDL? And she said, it's at a number 72. I jumped up and down for joy. I said, that's fantastic. And that's why my cholesterol level is so high because my, if my HDL is all the way up at 72, then yay, that's awesome. I said, so please uh, tell me what my, I don't even care what my LDL number is, which they consider the bad cholesterol. I said, where's my, uh, what is my insulin sensitivity or insulin resistance number at? And I'll give the benefit of the doubt. I believe she said four. So that means that my insulin, my body is insulin sensitive. It's at a number four. That means anytime I have any type of uh, something that's going to raise my blood glucose level, my insulin is right on it. So while I was on the statin, I actually was facing diabetes. I was pre-diabetic. I'm not like that anymore. Um, now, another thing. They call LDL cholesterol, all of the pharmaceutical world calls LDL cholesterol bad cholesterol. I'm not so sure they're correct on that. I've seen a bunch of different um, videos and done some research with following cardiologists. Um, some of the cardiologists were, I mean, they've headed up programs and things in uh, and Johns Hopkins. So these are not just off the wall, little hillbilly cardiologists, you know, like I would be. <laughs> um, the research that they did showed that LDL cholesterol is very important in your body. It's actually important and it's necessary. Every cell in your body has cholesterol in it. When you go out, and I'll, I'll do it real quick. Um, when I go out for a walk, in the morning, I try to go out four days a week and do about two and a half to three miles um, in those walks and I walk fast pace. When I go out there and walk, if I can, I take my shirt off. And I don't like taking my shirt off in front of people, but that's just how it is. I take my shirt off because in doing the research that I've done, I found out that through gaining a half hour of sunlight in your body, your body absorbs that energy from the sun. And that energy then gets turned into vitamin D in your body. A half hour in a good sun will give you 10,000 IUs of vitamin D. That's fantastic. Guess how it turns into vitamin D? Guess what causes it to, to happen and to bring it, you know, the, that energy into your body? LDL cholesterol. You can check me out on that one, please do your own research. So if my if I would have been on a statin and my LDL cholesterol numbers would be lower, I wouldn't be getting a sufficient amount of vitamin D. If you do a study and start researching um, the vitamin D deficiency in America, you'll find out that Americans are extremely vitamin D deficient. Why is it important to have vitamin D? Vitamin D fights against sicknesses. Um, not only does vitamin D fight against sicknesses such as COVID-19, but it also works together in conjunction with vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 and vitamin D, when they are together, working together, they remove calcium 
from your bloodstream and put it into your bones. Fights against osteoporosis. Um, but guess what else it fights against? Atherosclerosis. I have a 100% calcified artery. Take notice of that word, calcified. That means it has calcium build up in that artery between the inner and outer arterial walls gets inside through me being uneducated throughout most of my life and causes your arteries to close up. The materials that go into those, um, into your arterial walls are LDL cholesterol and calcium. However, it's not all LDL cholesterol. It is the, what they call oxidized LDL cholesterol. It is a damaged LDL cholesterol. Guess what damages your LDL cholesterol? Sugar. <laughs> We're gonna get to it. Um, when you have sugar, when you have uh, eat simple carbohydrates and put sugar into your system, you, you receive inflammation. That inflammation causes damage to your LDL cholesterol particles, causes them to shrink in size. When that shrinks in size, it then penetrates your arterial walls and you now have coronary artery disease. This is what I'm fighting against right now. I just turned 58 last week. So why am I bringing all this up? It's the reason I changed my diet. I got rid of all the sugars, the added sugars and the simple carbohydrates in my life. And I now eat um, on average between 50 and 100 grams of complex carbohydrates per day. And that is healthy. That is very healthy. Um, I wasn't trying to lose weight, but I've lost about 25 pounds in these past nine months. I feel better. Now, what I want to get to also is, um, again, in this video, you see I've got a couple little shorts of walking and checking things out. That exercising also um, is a big part of it. It's a part of your life. It's a part of my life now. In doing that exercising, um, that is also key into bringing my HDL cholesterol, raising it up, um, which is very beneficial to your system. Um, and it helps keep your LDL cholesterol healthy so that it's not damaged and you're not um, basically killing yourself. It just makes everything work better. It keeps your blood flowing. It keeps, um, it, just, it just, I'm not a doctor, man. It just, I'm gonna keep it as simple as I can because I'm very simple. It is just downright good for you. So why am I doing all this? Why? Because when I'm 70 years old, I don't wanna be sitting in a wheelchair with an oxygen tank and having my family have to push me around and take care of me. I want to live healthy until it's my time to go. And I know I have an appointed time. The Lord God's gonna take me when it's his time. And there's nothing I can do about that. Um, but that's what's gonna happen. Uh, but I wanna be healthy. And, and when it's time to go, I'll go. So I wanna hit on something else. I, um, I had a stress test a couple weeks ago. And in that stress test, uh, I failed it. I failed it miserably. Um, and I couldn't understand why. And remember, I have a 100% calcified artery still. So I'm working off of two open clear arteries and the one has a stent, which is fine. I just had a check last week, it's fine, it's open. Um, and the one that's 100% calcified has grown its own bypasses around it. However, my left ventricle, there's a portion of it that is sleeping, waiting for blood to enter it. <clears throat> well, when I had that stress test done, I got chest cramps and I had to quit early. And I didn't understand why. Because I've been exercises, exercising and I haven't been, I've, I've been doing great. So, the, I mean, even the very next day I went out and I walked and I broke all my records. I've ran up hills. I've ran up hills. I got my blood, uh, my heart rate up to 159 beats a minute uh, a couple times. Uh, I, I kept jogging. Uh, I would jog for 
75, 100 yards and, and run my heart rate up in, well in the 140s, 150s, and I felt fantastic. But why couldn't I do it on that stress test? A couple days ago, Saturday, I'm sorry, Friday, I decided, because red wine's good for you, right? I decided throughout that afternoon, I'm going to be super relaxed and just have a good time. And I drank about four, possibly even five glasses of wine on Friday throughout the afternoon and evening. I do not get drunk. I just want to put that out there right now, make it straight. I do not get drunk. Um, if I feel, if I start feeling, you know, like it's hitting me, I put it down, drink water. Um, but I can go through an entire afternoon sipping wine and enjoy it and never and not get drunk, just relaxed. And so that's what I did on Friday. Well, Saturday morning, I went out and took a walk and I, I hope somebody hears this, okay? Saturday morning, I went out and took a walk. And when I was walking, when I started, my heart hurt, my chest hurt. And I couldn't figure out why, I couldn't understand it. It felt like a, when I, I'm not as bad as when I did the stress test, but I could feel it coming on, so I had to slow way down. And um, I slowed down to 17 and a half minutes for that mile, um, that my, the, the pace that I was going, so that I didn't cause any problems, but I kept walking. <clears throat> and yes, I carry nitroglycerin pills with me while I'm walking. So I didn't understand it. And, and after I'd gotten into my walk about a mile, a mile and a quarter, I was okay. And I was picked up my pace and uh, still, still took it easy. But I picked up my pace and, and I got done and it just was hitting me. Why in the world would it be like that today? And then I thought back, well, yeah, I had some wine. So good old Google, I started researching what happens to your arteries after drinking wine and I found out that when you consume more than one to two glasses two glasses of wine in a day it has a counter reaction and, and at the time it lowers your blood pressure um, and you feel great but like 13 hours later this article that I read 13 or so hours later, it actually causes your arteries to constrict, to tighten up, just the same as if you have an adrenaline rush um, and, and, and cortisol is released into your body. Adrenaline and cortisol is released into your body. So that was what I was feeling. It was like my, hot, my blood pressure, um, I can just tell, my blood pressure went up. My heart rate, while I was walking that first mile, even though I was walking slow, my heart rate was running in the high one teens, 116, 118, while walking slow. That's not right. There's something off there. But then after I warmed up, it started going down. With all that being said, I went for a walk today. Today is Monday. I'm off work on Mondays, <clears throat> most of the time. So when I walked today, I felt fantastic. I walked 14 and less than 15 minutes a mile, walked fast pace, felt great, didn't have any chest pains, wanted to start jogging, wanted to walk faster, but I'm being careful, and watched my heart rate. In places where my heart rate was up closer to 120, in those same areas, while walking 17 minutes a mile, today at less than 15 minutes a mile, they were run a, running around 100. My heart rate was about 100, so it was beating a lot slower. It wasn't working anywhere near as hard. And I did that on purpose because I didn't have any wine last night. I had not even an entire glass before dinner. Um, because red wine has cortisol in it, it's good for you. And I love the taste of red wine, I just do, I love it. Um, but I restricted myself um, and, and disciplined myself to not have any more than that 
uh, four ounces of red wine. And I did that around five o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. So the alcohol, the wine, whatever chemical it produces did not affect me today. So my blood pressure stayed low while I was walking. My heart rate stayed low while I was walking. Um, and I felt amazingly better. So I question, um, I wish I would have d just journaled or whatever. Um, I probably had three glasses or four glasses of wine the day before my stress test. And it probably caused um, the arteries uh, around my heart to constrict, to tighten up. Um, especially being in that stress test situation where more cortisol, even a greater amount of cortisol and adrenaline is released. I think the other one's called ephedrine, but I'm not sure. Um, so putting it out there, I'm, I'm hoping that um, somebody gets to listen to this, somebody actually pays attention to this. I just want you to know that everything that I've been doing, the salads I've been eating, um, I eat healthy fats, I, I do eat salmon, uh, uh, wild caught Alaskan sockeye salmon uh, a couple times a week. I eat a couple cans of sardines that are in extra virgin olive oil a week. I eat a lot of garlic, three to four cloves of garlic every day. Um, a lot of greens. Uh, yes, I do have my red meats, but it's not a lot. And when I do, I try to have grass-fed, grass-finished beef because that actually is high in omega-3 fatty acids as well. Um, there's a lot of different things that I do. If you follow this channel, if you like and subscribe and, and follow this channel, I will be doing more of these videos on how I eat, the way that I cook, um, the way that I exercise, uh, hopefully to help somebody else out. I'm the only reason, the main reason, I'm not going to say the only reason, the main reason I'm doing these videos is to hopefully help others to begin their journey on living a healthy life. The foods that I eat are whole foods. I don't eat foods out of a box. The only thing out of a box that I eat is I will at times use about a tablespoon of Ezekiel cereal uh, on my steel cut oatmeal because steel cut oatmeal is low in the glycemic index. It has um, complex carbohydrates in it. It's good for you. Your body needs that kind of stuff. Um, but I will put a little bit of Ezekiel cereal on that just to give it some crunch. And it also is all sprouted grains. It's all good for you. Um, and so, you know, that's the only thing <clears throat> that I'll eat out of a box. <clears throat> Everything else is extra virgin olive oil, whole meats, whole vegetables. I don't eat chips. Um, I will eat some crackers. Uh, Triscuit makes a, an organic cracker that is three ingredients. It is um, whole grain, whole wheat, salt, and um, cold pressed oil. Of I can't remember which one it is, but it's cold pressed oil. And if you have oil that's cold pressed, that's good. The other oils, um, sorry, they're bad. They're just bad for you. You could do a research on that. Maybe I'll do a video on that one day. But I know I've run kind of long. This is um, longer than I typically do videos. I try to keep them below 15 minutes, but man, I had a lot to say. Um, I even took notes. Um, so anyway, there you have it. I, um, again, please like this video, subscribe to this channel. We will be doing more and more of this as time goes on and um, talking about how to live a simple life, how to uh, get rid of stress, how to make your body ready. If you do get into a stressful situation, which is what I'm doing, um, and how to keep your organs healthy and, and, and get away from being uh, pre-diabetic, diabe yeah, diabetic, um, to get away from heart disease, coronary artery disease, cancer. Um, I'll just throw this little note in there real quick and I'm gonna be doing videos on this as well. Um, Sugar causes inflammation in your blood. Inflammation in your blood causes cancer. It's as simple as that. It's just, you know. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, thank you all very much. I, uh, I hope 
this helps somebody. God bless you all.